Okay, so if you're watching this, it's probably because you are interested in some products and getting healthy from the inside out. And I never thought that I would be so excited about talking about leaky gut and something called candida. And uh, a couple of years ago, I just never even had this on my scope of things that I would be doing. But here I am. Life circumstances brings us to a different points than we thought we would be in. And I'm super excited to be able to talk about this with people because it's made a huge, huge difference with our family. Um, just a little background information. I have three kids. There are six uh, almost four and two and a half. And um, we have spent our fair share of time in the doctors, uh, mostly because of me. But then um, my six-year-old, she just turned six, has got a host of allergies. Um, so I've spent a lot of time trying to figure things out with her. When she was almost 10 months old, um, I was diagnosed with my first autoimmune disorder, and that one was uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I would wake up in the morning, and my joints would be so small, and I couldn't get out of bed, um, and I was having to go to the doctor and have them drained. So they were trying to figure out what was going on with me. Uh, long story short, the only answer that they ever gave me was steroids. Um, I didn't want to take them because of all of the things, the side effects, one of them was going blind and I was going to have to go to the doctor every six months to be able to make sure that my eyesight stayed intact. And at that time, it just scared me. There was no way that I wanted to be going through that. Um, but my health didn't get a ton, ton better and I was diagnosed with lupus. So fast forward, um, I kind of got it under control a little bit, reading a lot about diet, but my symptoms never really went away. And then I got pregnant with my second child, um, and pregnancy went pretty well. My symptoms seemed to subside a little bit. And when she was seven months old, we found out that we were expecting my third child. So my body um, never really had time to adjust, and after I had him, uh, my body just crashed. And when he was six months old, I was diagnosed with my third autoimmune disorder, and that was celiacs. So then my world crashed again because everything that I ate was gluten. Um, that's kind of the gateway to get food into our mouths. So I started doing a ton of research and um, again arrived at being able to eliminate things and I was told that I had to anyway. So for about 18 months, I completely cut gluten out of my diet. Then, um, coupled with the fact that my oldest daughter was going through so many allergic reactions, um, she couldn't step outside without being a complete mess, and we live on a dairy farm, so it wasn't really an option for us to not have her outside. But every time she stepped foot into the barn, um, her nose would just start running uncontrollably. She couldn't be around some of the animals. And coupled with that, she has a lot of food allergies. Um, she has one food allergy with tree nuts that's really severe. She goes into anaphylactic responses and um, that's a really scary situation for us but we were also told that she had a lot of other food allergies which now I'm realizing there's a big difference between being told that you have an allergy and being told that you have an intolerance. So that's a little bit of background information. While I'm not a doctor, um, with all those things going on, we have spent our fair share of time in doctor's offices. And um, I've been told before that I'm a huge dork, and I take credit in that because I read about everything. Um, once my daughter was going through all that stuff, it put it on a whole new level for me. And I started reading every single article that I could get a hold of. And um, I arrived, you know, knowing that we should be taking probiotics. It's something that we've been taking for years, but we never really saw a lot of differences with the probiotics that we had been taking, just ones from health food stores, um, things that we were getting over the counter. And I knew that we should be taking them, so we did it, but it was never something that we really saw results for. And then someone told me about Probile 5 from Plexus, and that got me reading a little bit more. And what I came across was something called leaky gut and candida, which I can't believe out of all the times that I was um, in the doctor's office and knowing what I do know now that nobody told me about it. So that's why I want to share this with you. There's so much that I could say about it, but I'll try to keep it really short. Um, we all have something in our bodies called candida. Everybody does. It's the bacteria in our body that is designed to decompose our body after we pass, which is kind of a morbid thought, but that's what it's put in our bodies for, and it also decomposes some of the food. 
what happens due to a lot of extraneous um, environmental circumstances and things that we do to our bodies is that that bad bacteria should be a lot less, about 20% of what makes up our bacteria in our gut. The other percentage, the other 80% should be good bacteria. But what actually happens with most Americans now is that those numbers are reversed and the bad bacteria completely outweighs the good bacteria. And ways that that happens, if you've ever been on an antibiotic, um, antibiotics don't know that they should just attack bad bacteria when you're sick. So they completely attack everything and it wipes out the good bacteria. Anytime um, you, you might think that you haven't been on an antibiotic lately, but it doesn't matter if you were on one when you were one or you know right after you were born or um, even if you haven't ever been on one, a lot of the foods that we eat now have antibiotics in them. It's just kind of a fact now that, that you know that's the way that things um, are done. So one way is antibiotics. Another way is just simply the foods that we eat um, and the, the yeast overgrowth. And I'm going to talk about that in a second stress on our bodies um, does crazy crazy things with the bacteria in our gut so there's lots of ways that 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 gut bacteria that we have gets completely messed up what ends up happening when that gut bacteria gets so messed up and that bad bacteria overpopulates is this is kind of gross and it grosses me out to think about these things happening inside of our bodies but what actually happens is that that yeast overgrows that bad bacteria is called candida and it's it's a yeast that's inside of our systems so if you think about bread rising and you add too much sugar to it that bread is going to go and it's going to blow up and it's going to be everywhere and just like what happens on the countertop that same thing happens in our in our um, immune system and in our guts so anytime you're eating sugar even if you think you have a really clean diet you eat an apple or a banana, it has a natural sugar in it. It goes into that yeast that's growing inside of you and it just makes it grow even more. So when it grows, it's not just floating around inside of your intestines, which is what I kind of always thought and why I always thought that it was really good to have a high probiotic, um, a high flora count in your probiotic. Some of them you'll see are like 35 billion. What happens with those is that it goes in and it flushes out your system. But what I didn't know is that that candida actually attaches to your intestine. And it gets worse. When it attaches, it forms a hard layer over it called chitin. So now inside of your, inside of your stomach or your intestines, you not only have that yeast, but I want you to think of like a hard exoskeleton on a crustacean like um, a cockroach. So that really, that really hard thing that makes it crunch when you step on it, that's actually forming over top of the yeast. It's impossible for a probiotic to get through that hard layer. So what happens is it forms that hard layer. Now you've got that yeast, but it just keeps growing until it overpopulates all of your intestinal walls. Those probiotics that have that high flora count, they sweep things that are floating around in there, but they don't do anything to attack that hard layer. So not only do you need a probiotic, you also need an antifungal called Chitinese. And that goes in and it attacks that hard layer. And when it attacks that hard layer, then it gets it cleaned out. So that's what the ProBio 5 does. If you don't get that antifungal layer um, attacked, what happens in this keeps getting better, what happens is that it can actually perforate holes inside of your intestine. So if now you've got that hard layer of crust going everywhere, it actually um, pokes holes. It has a little hook on the end of it, they um, have discovered, and it pokes holes in your intestinal walls. Now what happens is that those particles can get into your bloodstream. It's not supposed to be in your bloodstream. But when it does get into your bloodstream, your body sees it as a foreign invader. So with me and my autoimmune disorders, it was going into different places in my body that it shouldn't be. And when my body saw it as a foreign invader, it would attack it. But it didn't just attack that, it attacked my joints, it caused inflammation and swelling. And so for me, that caused um, rheumatoid arthritis. That's not just because, say, you have rheumatoid arthritis, you're the only one that has a candida issue or a leaky gut issue. It manifests in hundreds of different ways. 
So it manifested in my daughter at four. Um, well, the first time she was diagnosed with, uh, with food allergies was when she was much younger. She was only a year and a half, but at four years old, we took her back to her allergist and they tested her, um, her, her routine blood test. And when we got it back, it showed up that she should no longer be eating carrots. She had carrots every single night. She was always watching Looney Tunes before she went to bed. Um, it was kind of a daddy-daughter thing before they would go to bed. And she would watch those Looney Tunes and eat a carrot like Bugs Bunny. Well, we never saw anything happening with it. She wasn't breaking out anyway the way that we thought of food allergies. But why it actually came back on her blood work was because it was something that she was eating so much of. And that carrot was actually leaking into her immune system. It was leaking out of her gut and into her bloodstream. So when it was detected on blood work, it was because she was eating so much of it that it was actually showing up there. She should never have had carrot in her bloodstream to be diagnosed with. That, that should have been digested and the, the minerals and the nutrients should have been taken out of that in her gut. But instead, she was so unhealthy, even at four years old, sadly, that it was leaking out into her bloodstream, so it was showing up on a blood test. That wasn't an allergy. That was an intolerance. It was something um, that we needed to take care of, and we have. We've gotten her gut very healthy now, and she, thankfully, does not have a lot of those intolerances that we were told before. But we were never, ever told about leaky gut when we were in the doctor's office. We were told that um, she needed a steroid, she needed an inhaler, and she needed to completely avoid all of the foods that we were being told um, that she was intolerant to. So there's a couple of things that I just think are really, really important before you get going with any products that you understand is that candida issue that we all have and the bacteria that's in our gut and also uh, that leaky gut component because it manifests in so, so many different ways. So if you take leaky gut and whatever your issue is, um, you know, lethargy, brain fog, um, with mine it was autoimmune disorders, allergy issues, it can do hosts of different issues with weight gain and weight, weight loss because you're not able to absorb things and pass things along the way that you should be. So weight gain is a really huge issue. If you take um, leaky gut and, and then whatever your um, your health issue is that you're thinking about trying to get rid of, you know, IBS. Um, there's so many different things that I could go on about, but if you Google that, you'll be able to see that there's such a big connection with it, and it's something that's so important for us to be able to understand before we start on these health journeys. So if you have any questions about it, feel free um, to let me or whoever sent this video to you know, but I'm so, so thankful that you're taking the right steps to get there because I think that this is um, something that every single person needs to know about, and it's something that was life-changing for us. So I'm so excited that so many people are catching on to it now. Thanks.